It's a beautiful day today once again and we're reading some more concerning but also fun Reddit stories and I hope you guys are excited. It's going to be a wonderful time like it is every single day and if you guys enjoyed today's episode make sure you subscribe if you want to and let's get into it. Enjoy guys. Am I the gay half for telling my fiance that the wedding is off if my daughter isn't in it? My fiance and I are getting married soon. I have a 14 year old daughter who's supposed to be my best woman in our wedding. We told my daughter that she can buy any dress that she loves so I took her shopping and she chose a dress. We returned home and fiance is furious because apparently the dress is we got into a fight about it and I told her she has no right to show my daughter and doesn't get a say in what she should wear and she was sulking for a day because of that. Then the next day the dress was gone. She got rid of it so my daughter wouldn't wear it. My daughter didn't say anything but next day we found the wedding dress torn in pieces and completely unfixable. My daughter shrugged and said that it was so she got rid of it. My fiance was crying for a day because she'd spent a long time looking for that dress and loved it. Now my fiance wants a child free wedding, which is another way of saying that she wants to uninvite my daughter. I told her that she can have a child free wedding with somebody else because the wedding's off if my daughter isn't in it. Now she thinks I'm an a-hole. Okay, that was confusing. I'll try and find some context to what's going on here. OP said, my daughter likes making people hate her. I need to get married eventually. This is the fourth fiance that I'm gonna break up with thanks to my daughter, lol. And that's got 1.6k downvotes. And the top comment is a response to that comment. Don't get married. Your daughter's unstable and needs therapy and you're trying to get married for all the wrong reasons. The comment below that says, are you stupid? It's very obvious that your partner and your daughter dislike each other to the point of calling each other names and destroying each other's property out of spite. They want to hurt each other and you want to turn them into a dysfunctional family. Yes, you the a-hole. Comment below that says, they don't need a wedding. They need family therapy first. Edit, you know what? I don't think any of this is real. This comment says, that's also a really nasty thing to say about your own daughter. I wonder how much of the daughter's crappy behavior is because of crappy parenting. Four fiancés in a few years. How well could OP really know them in such a short amount of time? And why are they meeting the daughter so soon when she's obviously unhappy with her dad dating? It kind of sounds like OP needs to stop thinking about getting laid and start thinking about parenting his daughter and hopefully getting both family therapy and individual therapy for the daughter. There's obviously more going on here and I'd love to hear both the fiancés and the daughter's perspectives. Yeah, 100%. There's definitely all sorts of underlying issues here. And also the post doesn't even say much. OP has left a few comments. OP said my fiance got rid of my daughter's dress. My daughter shredded my fiance's dress. Right, okay. Yeah, and also apparently this was the dress that the daughter chose, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be sorted out here before you think about getting married, OP. This comment says, having seen the dress and all of your responses, you the a-hole, your fiance's just Stop dating and get your daughter a therapist or something. Destroying a wedding dress is insane given the potential prices. You should have picked the dress together. And honestly, you shouldn't have even proposed if the relationship between your daughter and future wife is that unstable. You're very much the a-hole for not thinking a single thing through and now lulling your way into it. You're no older than your daughter mentally. Yeah, like that other comment said about seeing the perspective from the daughter and the fiance. I feel like that's super needed. There's a lot left out here. This comment says, you're the a-hole. I'm just going to state the facts you've laid out here in the post and the comments. Four fiancés in 10 years or something were all scared off by your daughter that loves making people hate her. She chose a dress that nearly everybody here agrees is both inappropriate for a wedding and for a 14 year old. Your then fiance did not like the dress and returned it so your daughter cut up her wedding dress beyond repair and you think what? You're just unlucky at love or something? Your daughter has some serious undiagnosed mental health concerns. You need to set up boundaries. She's spoiled by you and you enable her to sabotage your relationships. You need therapy OP and so does your daughter. I hope this is fake but I don't know. Bad parents exist. Yeah, it doesn't really seem like a wedding should be the thing to focus on at the moment. The next one says, Am I the gay hoff for telling everybody that I was surfing a chicken pot pie for dinner when it wasn't a plain and basic one? I love how different these posts are. So I had a few people over and one of the easiest meals for me to make is a pot pie. To me, a pot pie is just whatever you want inside of a crust. Chicken pot pie is usually leftover veggies with a thick gravy and crust. This time around, I had fresh roasted hatch chilies and some corn and some chicken, onions and kale. So that's what I put inside. And I used my savory pie crust that has some cheddar and black pepper. When I served it, however, I guess it really pissed off my brother-in-law, Frank, who immediately started complaining, asking, what the f is this? <laughs> and how is this a pot pie? I told him it's a pot pie and I explained what I said above. He tried to argue that a chicken pot pie shouldn't have anything besides chicken, gravy, peas, carrots and maybe potatoes. I said okay well sorry I don't really see food in black and white. No one said they had any allergies or issues with food so I didn't think it'd be an issue. He kept on scowling and pushed around the food and eventually left early. Am I the a-hole? In my family we never really kept recipes as hyper specific. We cook and eat what we have. I figured that most people were the same and it's only people 
people on the internet who make a big deal out of recipes? Yeah, right. So I feel like it's not about the pie. It's about what Frank said. It doesn't even matter about the food. You don't say, oh, what the f is this? When somebody gives you some food, that's an incredibly a holy thing to say. Now listen, that pie, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'd like it, but that does not excuse what Frank said. This comment says, the issue here has nothing to do with the definition of a chicken pot pie. The issue is that you invited somebody to your home, prepared and served him a meal, and he said, what the f is this? That's unacceptably rude guest behavior, making him the big time a-hole, and you're not the a-hole. This comment says, not the a-hole, but who puts kale in a pot pie? Yeah, this comment, I I wouldn't call you an a-hole and I definitely wouldn't be so rude, but I would not expect that meal if somebody said pot pie to me. Yeah, I feel like there should have been a heads up there or something OP. Like, hey, this is not like the pot pie that you're gonna imagine, but does that make what Frank said okay? No, definitely not. This comment says everybody sucks here. I'd personally think, what the f*** is this? But I certainly wouldn't say anything. But yeah, chicken pot pie is an actual dish that people have preconceived concepts of. If you look up a chicken pot pie recipe, they'll all be about the same. Yeah, like at most, you probably Probably should have said that it wasn't a traditional one OP. But yeah, Frank was super rude. Very a-holy thing for Frank to say. The top comment says, not the a-hole. While I can see why Frank may have expected a certain kind of pot pie and was perhaps disappointed to not get it, it does not excuse his rude, ungrateful behavior towards somebody who cooked for him. Everyone knows the proper non-a-holy thing to do in this situation is to move the food around your plate, make an excuse about having a late lunch, and then stop somewhere on the way home. For what it's worth, I make non-traditional stuff too, but I do try to warn any other suspecting guess about it. Like in this instance I would have said that it was a hatch chili or southwestern pot pie. Yeah, 100%. But does that make you the a-hole OP? No, I don't think so. The next one that we're going to read is on the Entitled People subreddit. Lady at the pool didn't want to wait her turn. I witnessed this at the pool the other day. I was sitting on a bench waiting for family and I saw this go down. Our community pool has several lanes roped off away from the general swimming area where people can do laps. If you're waiting for a lane to open, you wait by that side. And when somebody is finished, whoever was waiting first takes the open spot. People are usually civil about it and it's never an issue. All the swimming lanes are being used. The lady decides she doesn't feel like waiting for a lane and goes down the stairs into one of the lanes and waves her hands around under the water so that the swimmer can see her. This guy to his credit was way too nice. He comes up and she starts whining about how all the lanes are full. When's he going to be done? The other swimmers are taking forever etc. The guy explains that he just started and the other swimmers might be done soon. Oh no this lady can't wait. She complains some more and then says something like your lane is wider can't I just share and the guy let her share it so then they're both crammed into this lane and she's like flailing around and splashing water everywhere it seemed like she was trying to bother the guy to get him out my family came over at this point and we went to the other side of the pool but i did see the guy get out not long after i hope you got a swimming lane again edit the lanes are narrow so only one swimmer goes at a time i don't know why i didn't design the pool i've been coming here for years and that's how it's always been if the lanes are full sometimes people will swim next to them in the general swimming side this lady had the option to do that but chose to harass somebody for a lane? Yeah, the top comment, if we keep letting these people get their way, they'll never change. We all, as a society, need to start saying no and calling out entitlement by name. OP said, I know, I wish I'd said something. The lifeguards were on the other side of the pool so they couldn't hear what was going on. Yeah, it's so frustrating. People can be absolutely unbelievable. And yeah, that's right, they need to be called out on it too. Like, I don't know if it'd even really help with a lot of entitled people, because I feel like they'd probably just get defensive. But still though, people like this can't be feeling like they can do this all the time and everybody's just gonna do what they say. Like, no, that's not okay. Yeah, this comment too. If you had a joined it in the lane after the other guy left, she would have freaked out. Yeah, she definitely would have. Like what, it's okay for them to do it to other people but not okay for people to do it to them? Guaranteed you would have freaked out. The next one's called, am I the gay ho for asking my wife to spend all of her savings? I, 34 male, am married to the love of my life, 33 female. My wife is kind and nurturing and motivated in her career. She does a lot for me at home since I work long hours. We married four months ago, dated for eight years. We're both easygoing and have the same sense of humor and rarely argue. I make four times more money. I'm in healthcare, but she makes a good salary as well. Since I make four times what she does, I tend to pay for most stuff, dinners and weekend trips and mall shopping, which I absolutely do not mind. With bigger purchases, we pay for things together in proportion to what we make. She's usually okay with paying her share of stuff, one quarter of the rent and groceries, and will sometimes offer to pay for dinners and dates. She's very close with her best friend. She has four. They're great 
people, but they're basically attached to the hip and they talk daily in a group chat, which is fine. Everybody needs a support system. I have similar friends. Her and her four friends have a combined saving account together for investing in something together. They've each been putting a few hundred dollars per month each. I've known about this for years and I didn't love the idea initially, which I expressed, but she was adamant that she wanted this at the time. And at the time we weren't hurting for money and it was ultimately her money and her decision. We're now looking to buy a home in one of the most expensive real estate markets in the US. She expresses that she doesn't have much in her own savings, but has 20K of her own money tied in with her friend's combined savings. Over the last year, they've been told by two financial advisors that five people attempting to invest together in real estate or stocks or a business or something was not a good idea. And they also recommended to split the funds to five separate accounts since the account is under one of the friend's names and there are tax implications for having that amount of money to her name, 100,000. The homes that we're looking at need around 60 to 70,000 for a down payment. I stated that I was willing to spend nearly all of my savings for the down payment for a home, which is 50,000. So I told her she should pull that money from her joint friend's account to help with the down payment. It's a huge purchase and I don't think it should be my burden alone. She got really upset and told me, I don't want to touch that money. I promised my friends that it'd be free investing together. We should look for a less expensive home then, maybe a fixer upper. She then stated, it'd be easier for you to accrue the money back since you make so much more. This was very frustrating and I told her, it's unfair that I have to spend nearly all of my savings and you don't. Your friend fund is stupid and it's stupid not to use that money for our future home. Am I the a for asking her to use her own money from her friend's account? Breaking that promise to her friend so that we can buy a nice home together? No, I don't think so, OP. Like, I'm assuming that your partner doesn't want this to just be your house. Like, of course, you're going to be living together. But does your partner want you to completely own the house or something? Because it kind of sounds like they don't want to contribute anything to the down payment. And yeah, I guess you could be like, oh, well, you know, I'll buy a cheaper house, but it'll be completely my house. But obviously that wasn't the agreement that you guys had. But yeah, it's kind of frustrating that she's more committed and more excited about this thing that she's doing with her friends than with the home that you guys are going to have together and the future you're going to have together. Yeah, no, I do feel like your partner's in the wrong OP. This comment says, not the a-hole. Married or not, I would not buy a house with somebody who would rather have an uncertain investment fund with friends than help me with the down payment of our shared house and considers my savings our savings and her savings her savings. Also, I don't fault you for calling the fund stupid because it sounds stupid since two financial planners have said that it's ill-advised and told them to split it up again. Yeah, I don't think it's rude to say that it sounds stupid. From the sounds of it, it is stupid. And also, is it invested or is it like pulled together and they're ready to invest in something? When the right opportunity shows up, they're going to invest in something. But yeah, either way, why is she more committed to that than she is to your relationship together and your future together? The top comment says, wait, so she and her friends have a shared savings account that they've been adding to together with the intent of eventually investing in, as in the money is currently just sitting there in one person's account? Not the a-hole, that's absolutely ridiculous. I can see the value in having a shared bank account between close friends for the purpose of going on trips and like going on vacations together since you could just pull money for deposits instead of playing the Venmo game. But this is ridiculous and it makes it seem like she cares more about planning for her future with her friends than with her own husband. Yikes. Also, maybe I live somewhere really expensive, but I'm shocked that 60 to 70,000 isn't already the minimum down payment possible on a fixer-upper house. Yeah, I don't feel like you're the a-hole OP. I feel like most people, if they were in your shoes, would feel the same. This comment says, nope, and I'd reconsider buying a house or if you do, make her sign a post-nuptial. If you can pony up 50 grand and you've essentially been footing all the bills so she can save money with her friends, the sad part is that money's just sitting in an account and not being invested and your wife and her other two friends have zero claim to any of the money unless their names are on the account. Yeah, that's right. If there's so many different people adding into this account, which one of the friends actually has the account? Like whose money is whose? That's so weird. And yet obviously stupid. But also it's all assuming that OP and her partner have been discussing this and they do want to go in on this together. Like if OP has just sprung this on their partner and it wasn't even talked about beforehand, then yeah, that's not good either. It seems like there's a bit of a lack of communication here or something. But yeah, with what you've said here, OP, and also under the assumption that you've agreed to go into this together, your partner's priorities are in the wrong place. And also that money in the friend's account, that's just a recipe for disaster. The money's probably gone. The next one is called, am I the gay hole for refusing to marry my pregnant girlfriend? I may 17 thought that I had my life more or less figured out. Finish high school, get into construction work like my dad, start building my future step by step. My girlfriend who's 19 was already a year into college, studying to become a nurse. We were both young and in love, thinking that we had all the time in the world to plan our lives. And then everything changed. A few weeks ago she told me that she was pregnant. I didn't know what to say. We were careful but accidents happened and suddenly we were staring down the path that we hadn't planned on. She was surprisingly calm, already talking about how we could make it 
at work and how she'd balance school and the baby. But then she dropped something big. She said that we should get married before the baby comes. I was floored. Marriage. I love her, but I'm only 17 and still in high school. I haven't even started my job in construction yet, and marriage feels like a huge, overwhelming step. Yeah, because it is OP. I told her I needed time to think about it, but I could see how much my hesitation hurt her. It should not hurt her, OP. Of course you're gonna be hesitant. You're bloody 17. You should not be getting married. Over the next few days, she kept on bringing it up, saying it was the right thing to do for our baby. You don't know that. It absolutely might not be the right thing to do. Her parents, who are pretty traditional, think the same way and are pushing for us to get married too. I can feel the pressure from all sides, but every time I think about it, I feel like I'm not ready. I've barely started my own life. How can I commit to something as huge as marriage right now? Eventually, I told her that I wasn't ready to get married. I explained that it's not a no forever, but I need time to finish my school, get a job and make sure that we're stable before we take that leap. I don't want to rush into something this serious just because we're having a baby. But instead of understanding, she got really upset. She accused me of not loving her or our baby enough. She said that if I truly cared, I'd marry her and do the right thing. <laughs> oh, get out of here. I tried to explain that I do love her and I want to be there for both of them. But I don't think getting married right now is the answer. The whole conversation turned into a huge argument and now things between us are really tense. I love how the partner thinks they know what the right thing to do is because you absolutely don't. Her parents are now involved too and they're really pushing for us to get married. They've even offered to help us out financially if we go through with it, which only adds more pressure. My parents on the other hand have been supportive and told me that it's okay to wait, but I can't help feeling like I'm letting everybody down. I'm torn between wanting to do what's best for my girlfriend and our baby and feeling completely unprepared for marriage at 17. Am I the gay hover refusing to marry her? Should I just go along with it for the sake of our baby even if I'm not ready? No, you should absolutely not just go along with it for the sake of your baby OP. Oh my god, you're 17. Having a child at 17 is going to be absolutely wild. You're not ready for that, let alone getting married OP. You obviously know that. Your partner's having the wrong reaction here OP. Your partner's acting like they're all smart and wise at the old age of 19. Acting like they know what they're talking about and stuff. And that if you don't do it, you don't truly love them. What a joke. The top comment says, always follow your gut instincts and you won't go wrong. You are too young and you need to get yourself set up to become the best that you can be. Yeah, like how do you even have a kid at 17? Like you said, you haven't even started your construction job. It's not like kids are cheap or something. But also on top of that, you meant to worry about getting married at 17? No chance, OP. And this comment too, not the a-hole. You're not letting them down. They're letting you down. This comment says, not the a-hole. You're 17 and there's no proof the baby's even yours. This comment says, not the a-hole. Remind her parents it's 2024. You don't have to get married just because she's pregnant. Get all the proof too. Have you seen a positive test? A scan? Anything? Or is it just her word? Get a paternity test because even for a traditional family, they're being weirdly pushy. Check your condoms for holes. Yeah, I'm a pretty cynical person. Also, this comment. She's an adult. You're not. This is weird for me. Yeah, of course you're not the a-hole for feeling the way that you feel, OP. I saw a comment that said marriage is the easy part. Having a baby at 17, that's going to be the hard part. Like, yeah, definitely don't get married. Not now, anyway. Definitely make sure the child is even yours. Because, yeah, you having a kid at 17, you've already got too much to focus on. The next one is called, am I overreacting? My girlfriend went out to lunch with a male co-worker. So my girlfriend texted me that she was going to go out to lunch with a group of friends to celebrate two interns finishing their internship this Friday. I said, cool and have fun. They work in downtown Denver where there are hundreds of restaurants and bars to walk to from work. But they decided to go to a restaurant like 40 minutes away from work. Okay, so that's our first red flag. So they drive to the restaurant. 30 minutes pass and I get a call from a friend. She says, hey, I just saw your girl eating lunch with some older guy. I replied back and told her, oh yeah, she's out with some co-workers. And then my friend is like, no, it's just her and some guy. So I start texting my girlfriend asking her how lunch is going and who all went. And she tells me, well, the two interns and like four other people. Right, so now she's lying to you. Red flag number two. I was like, are you sure? And she said, yeah, why? I tell her that I just got a call from a friend and they described her and her guy friend and that it's only two of them. She tries to backtrack and says, oh yeah, the other two people ditched us. I told her to stop lying. You and this other guy were the only ones going out to eat from the beginning and you made up the whole story as a cover up. And then she tried to blame me and say that she didn't believe the friend of mine called me to let me know and that I was following her and I was being a creeper and a liar. Is this even real? I was like, please, you got caught. Now you're trying to blame me for it. And no, I did not follow you. So stop lying. My question, I feel like my girl said they're cheating on me or that she was too scared to tell me she was going out to lunch with a male co-worker. What do you think I should do? By the way, we've been together for seven years and we have a four-year-old daughter. Why did she have to lie about it and then try to blame me for it? Okay, so if this one is real, no, you're 
you're not overreacting OP. Of course not. You can't read that and be like, oh yeah, no, there's nothing fishy going on here. There absolutely is. The top comment says, if it was innocent, they wouldn't have gone to a restaurant 40 minutes away. That tells me they don't want people to see them together. Add that onto she lied to you. I think she's seeing the guy. Yeah, a million percent. And I don't think that's you jumping to conclusions, OP. This comment says the gaslighting was the admission of guilt. Yeah, definitely. They sound super guilty. And I wonder why that is. Maybe because they're doing something wrong. This comment says she lied, kept on lying and then attacked. I mean, that doesn't sound great. Yeah, definitely not. And you're not overreacting, OP. And all the best with it, OP. I feel like that's enough for today. That was such a fun episode and I hope you guys had a good time today. We need to read something wholesome after what we've read. Oh, this one's so cute. Please look at this picture of my friend's cat who got shaved for surgery. How beautiful little kitty cat. That's such an adorable cat too. I rolled my little sleeves up. So cute. My dog was declared cancer free today, so I'm reverse searing him a steak. <laughs> oh, that's so cute too. Time to celebrate, buddy. Hell yeah, congratulations. Thank you for watching everybody. I hope you had a wonderful time today. If you did, make sure you subscribe if you want to. And the comment of the day today goes to Spider Gamer. Day 87 to tell in the Fincy fam god awful jokes that I've heard on the internet. Did you hear about the Indian restaurant that was super secretive about their flatbread recipe? They had all of their cooks sign a non-disclosure agreement. <laughs> oh, that's so good. I love the god awful jokes so much. They're good, but they're also kind of bad, but they're also hilarious at the same time. Thank you for commenting them, Spider Gamer. Okay, I'm out of here. Thank you for the support, everybody. Have a beautiful rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!